Hello friends. In my previous talk, I spoke to you about the currently popular classification system of male youthful structural disease that's called LSE classification system. And in this video, I want to speak to you something which I have noted in my own personal experience of last three decades of practicing youth reconstructive surgery. What is missing in this classification, which is clinically very relevant? That's what we talk in this video. When you see this classification, LSE system, which talks about length, the segment location and the etiology, what is missing here is that there is no mention about the quantification of the degree of fibrosis in the structure. There is a detailed talk about etiology, but here they just explain what resulted in the structure, but how dense is the structure, how thick is the structure, how firm is the structure, the quantification of collagenosis is not there, which you will agree with me is of paramount importance for all reconstructive surgeons. So if you see this LSE classification system, it talks about length of structure, it talks about segment location, it talks about the etiology of structure. But if someone wants to know about the degree of fibrosis, you can have an indirect idea by knowing the duration of structure disease. I mean, how many months or how many years the structure has lasted in that patient's body. And that I call as duration or age of the structure. Friends, if you see any disease in the human body, each disease has a beginning, then it persists in the body for some some time, maybe months or years, whatever is the nature of the disease. And then there is a culmination of disease. So these are typically three phases of any disease. And we have also used such words, onset of disease, maturation of disease, and some complications taking place. So we are, as a clinician, used to knowing the disease in this format. So when we treat all diseases in human body as per the duration and natural history of the disease in the patient's body, then why not the structure in urethra? The LSE classification system talks about the length and segment and etiology, but it does not elaborate on how long the disease has traveled in the patient's body. The duration of disease. And I will put forth before you two reasons for my requesting you to consider the age of structure is first the pathological basis. That is the male urethra and you see the spongiosa of male urethra. Once there is a catheter inside, and there is a trauma by the catheter, which is a very common occurrence in our practice. And now the trauma has occurred, the healing process will begin. And in the first part of the healing process, this is the line showing you days from wounding. Immediately, you have a platelet conglomeration in that area of wound. Then comes the inflammatory phase, which is there till three days, wherein neutrophils, macrophage, lymphocytes come and inflammatory process sets in. And then is the proliferative phase, wherein the extracellular matrix is deposited in the wounded area. Angiogenesis is also taking place. Some fibroblasts, some endothelial cells come in and they lay down a collagen network. And this begins from day one and continuously goes on till day 30, one month. And after that, 
Next phase is remodeling phase, wherein whatever extracellular matrix or whatever immature collagen is laid down in the wound is subjected to the remodeling process. So this is the typical healing model in human body. The moment I show you this slide, you will immediately recall your pathology class teaching where the phases of wound healing are inflammatory, proliferative, scarring and remodeling. I want you to for a while focus your attention on the collagen part because that is what is the main crux. The collagen in the wound is formed by peptide chains. There are two alpha 1 chain and one alpha 2 chain and these three chains wind up like a hair coil to make a tropocollagen. And this tropocollagen binds to one another fiber and gives you a pack of tropocollagen fibers called as collagen fibril. And then this collagen fibril has cross linkage with other collagen fibrils to give rise to what is called as collagen fiber. Now this collagen fiber is the one which gives strength or is the one which gives rise to scar formation. In reference to urethra, there is a normal urethra there. If it gets catheterized and there will be some edema in the wall of urethra or some trauma, micro trauma in the urethral wall and then healing process will set in. You have hemostasis part, then you have inflammatory part and then you have deposition of extracellular matrix, the collagen, the immature scar part and this is forming up to 30 days. That means it is up to four weeks from the time of trauma, you have some degree of immature collagen coming up in the urethral wall. At that stage, you get, you get edema of urethral wall, which is causing the narrowing. And patient will come to you with obstructive flow, thin stream, burning in urination, dysuria, symptoms like that. If you recall your clinical practice, you will agree with me that whenever there is a catheter trauma, patients come to us within one month of catheterization complaining about thinning of stream and dysuria. That is what is actually happening to him. That he has from a normal urethra to an edematous urethra in four weeks which has immature collagen inside. And this I like to call as nascent structure because it has formed as a new structure. Let us put nascent structure on this side and then further time. After more time you spent, the immature collagen which was laid down in the proliferative phase and you had actually what is called collagen type 3, then this gets converted over a period of time from somewhere here to next three months there is remodeling of that collagen and collagen type 3 gets converted to collagen type 1. In simple language you may say that fibroblasts are replaced by fibrocytes or you may say immature collagen, unstable collagen is replaced by mature collagen or stable collagen or a thick collagen. This is a time dependent process. That is the point I want to make. And once the structure has lived for more than three months, you get a structure situation where from edematous thickening of the youthful wall to a constructive change in the youthful wall. And this I like to call as established structure. So from normal urethra to a nascent structure, in one month time and from one month to three months or beyond you have established structure. 
you will also call this as mature structure. Now let me share with you some biochemical piece of information about this. That, and they have been, these studies are very old, but subsequently nobody has taken these studies. That in mature uterine structure, the collagen that is present over a period of time, the type as well as the amount of collagen changes over a period of time. In, in one case, if you have type 1 collagen 75%, type 3 collagen 24% and some of these hyaluronic acid and dermatol sulfate and these are the references for this information. The over a period of time, the type 1 collagen increases or you may say and that happens in all body tissues. Over a period of time, type 3 collagen which is immature collagen which has more recoil strength, more elastic strength gets replaced by type 1 collagen which is more solid and more resilient. So this is, this process happens in structure over a period of time. The mean total collagen increase in this study was 32.3% and this was historical biochemical study. Subsequently what happens with the more duration of structure? How the collagen changes, how the collagen increases has not been studied. But our common perception is that over a period of time in structure urethra, collagen becomes dense and denser. So friends, you have at one hand now a established structure. So you have moved on from normal urethra to nascent structure to an established structure in three months time or beyond. After that, what happens in structure urethra that it sometimes develops infected complications like low urinary tract infection, like epididymoarchitis, or like upper urinary tract infection. So these are common infections which you can get in a patient of structure urethra or you develop back pressure complications which are urinary retention both acute and chronic back pressure change in the kidneys, unilateral or bilateral hydroelectronephrosis and then in some patients you can get renal failure. Now in an established structure case when either of these or both of these or many of these settle in we call the structure a complicated structure. Simple. So my feeling is that we as a clinician should know how far the structure disease has traveled in the urethra, how long. And on that basis, we should be calling these structures as nascent structures when it is less than four weeks, established structure, anything more than three months, and complicated structure when any of these complications develop, which usually happens after some year. Now, I have a therapeutic basis also for saying this. What is the therapeutic value of this kind of understanding? If there is a patient who has a nascent structure and pathologically it is an immature collagen, this disease where the collagen is soft, unstable, immature, more is the edema in the urethral wall and the mucosa of urethra which is occluding the urethral lumen, you can do a gentle dilatation over the wire which we call as coaxial dilatation, followed by intermittent self dilatation. Better would be to also apply topical clobetasol at the time of self dilatation. If the patient has developed a mature structure after three months, which we call established structure, they should be treated either by endoscopic DVIU or by any of the reconstructive methods that is necessary for that case, right? Anastomotic urethroplasty, substitution urethroplasty, a whole variety of them. But they, be, they should be applied to only those structures which have lived in the patient's body for more than three months. If you do a reconstruction in an unstable structure, then you will have failure of urethroplasty. 
The third is a complicated structure, which has been there. The structure has been there for some time, for some years, and then one fine morning, the complication happens. Something like an abscess. So these complications essentially require a preliminary diversion by a superglue catheter for short duration, and then reconstruction. So nascent structures dilate and follow with cell dilatation and use intraurethral cobetasol. Established structures, endoscopy or reconstruction. Complicated structures, a period of diversion followed by reconstruction. So that is the therapeutic implication of knowing the duration or the age of structure. Here is a patient who had a catheter uh, for, for some surgery and he developed intense urethral reaction as you can see the wall is irregular and the whole penile urethra and distal bulb urethra is involved and I am putting patient name with this permission. This is RGU showing catheter reaction and look at the date. This is the date here. After three months of dilatation over the wire and intermittent cell catheterization and using Clobetasol, this is the appearance. And this is the appearance after eight months. You can see here, October. Look at the smoothness of urethral wall. Entire mucosal inflammatory reaction has settled. So what has settled? Actually, what has settled is the edema of the urethral wall has settled. The inflammatory reaction in the urethral wall has settled with the application of topical steroids. In other words, there is some degree of reversal, some degree of reversal of the pathological process. And this is same patients after one year. Look at the change in his urethra. The point I'm making is that if you have unstable collagen in the wall of urethra, where you do not know how much is the edema and how much is collagen, and if you apply topical steroids, there is some degree of hope of reversal. And this is very, very important point to understand. You may say if collagen is formed in the body, it is formed for all time, but that's not true. In the body, you have collagenase enzyme, which can break the cross linkage between the collagen fibers and disintegrate collagen into small, small pieces. And these small, small pieces are eaten away by macrophages. So collagen also can be cleared in the body. And the topical steroids have been in use for a long time in our practice. And this is a meta-analysis published uh, recently uh, in 2020, which says that if you have been applying steroid topically on the urethral structure, then some patients do show, do show some response. And I, in my earlier videos on the use of coaxial dilatation and cell dilatation by the patient, its use, indications, outcomes, I have talked in, in another video. You can see that video and see more such cases where with the use of clobetasol, structure disease has practically reversed. So I hope you are agreeing with me that in the current classification system of LSE, there is need to add the duration of disease, the duration of structure or age of the structure. So thank you very much for being with me and patient listening. In case you have any questions, you can always write to me on my email.